Resurrection Day, we invite you to slide a little closer. Continue to make room for our guests and our family. We invite you to sing with us this next prelude, Living with Hope.
Good morning, church. Those of you joining us, we welcome you as we celebrate this Resurrection Sunday. We invite you to continue to slide in just a little tighter so we can fill this church, and then we'll open up our fellowship hall and our chapel as needed. Let us offer our voices in song as we sing Christ and Christ Crucified.
Christ is risen from the grave. Alleluia. 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 Welcome, Alleluia. Church, to St. Dennis as we gather to celebrate this Paschal feast. We invite you to rise and join us in our opening songs. And today we welcome our special celebrants, Father Mike Resop and our priest, Father Michael Teragopola. We do invite you to slide a little bit closer as we continue to make room for people. Let us raise our voices in song as we sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. Good morning, church. How are we doing this morning? Happy Easter to all of you. And on behalf of Father Gary, Father Michael, and the staff here at St. Dennis and St. Peter's, know that this is home, and you're always welcome. And so as we begin this celebration of the Lord's resurrection, let us sign ourselves as God's people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. And my friends, then, to prepare ourselves this morning, once again, let us call on God's great love and his mercy. And so together we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Then may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. So with the whole church, let us now give glory to God. And let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we, who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us be open now to the Word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. 
The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden in Christ with Christ in God. When Christ, your your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks. Please rise for our Easter sequence. Christ who 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, it is overwhelming to see the full church today. It is because Easter, Jesus rose from the dead. There is every reason to rejoice. We have people in the chapel and we have people in the you know, fellowship uh, hall. So welcome to all of you. The conversation between Joseph of Arimathea and Pontius Pilate went like this. Pilate said to him, Joseph, I don't understand. You are the richest man in the town. You have spent a good amount of money on the new tomb you bought for yourself and your family. And now you are giving it to Jesus. And Joseph responded, I loaned it just for the weekend. <laughs> Jesus won't be staying there longer. How true is that, you know? After an atheist died, a friend looked at him in the casket, shook his head and said, all dressed up, but no place to go. One final, I see a lot of children here. I remembered one little story. A Sunday school teacher uh, taught the children about the resurrection, how Jesus suffered, died, and was in the tomb for three days, and then he rose again. And then she asked them, what were the first words of Jesus as after he came out of the tomb? One little boy said, I am back. So my brothers and sisters, happy Easter to all of you. May the good news of the resurrection of Jesus fill each of us and the whole world with hope and love. May Christ's light beyond all this world's darkness shine in your hearts. You see the Easter candle, symbol of risen Christ. Last night we had beautiful Easter vigil. We bless the Easter candle, we bless the fire and we lit the candle. So Jesus surrounds all of us. He, his love enfolds us. His light surrounds and his love protects. You know, beautiful, exalted, we sang last night. When Cardinal Timothy Dolan of New York was asked in an interview who was the most influential person in his life, he answered without hesitation, Jesus Christ, of course. A bit perplexed, the interviewing reporter clarified, I meant someone alive. To which Cardinal answered, with all the surety of not merely belief, 
but to first hand experience you know jesus is alive today brothers and sisters we celebrate easter the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead the catechism of the catholic church calls easter the feast of feasts the feast of feasts no wonder you are all here this morning for the feast of feasts what sunday is to the week easter is to the year what sunday is to the week easter is to the year the resurrection of jesus christ is central to our faith saint paul says if christ has not been raised our preaching is useless and so is your faith so we won't be here father mike and me and you won't be sitting here if christ has not been it is because christ rose from the dead we are christians and we are in christianity all other religions have significant ethical systems and concepts about paradise and the afterlife only christianity has a god who became human literally died for the sins of his people and was raised again in power and glory to rule his church forever but some people say that the resurrection of jesus christ is a myth cs lewis a british writer says those who say that the resurrection of jesus christ is a myth haven't read enough myths you know we know when you read a myth it begins like once upon a time long long ago but jesus we know is a historical figure bishop baron the bishop of winona wrote an article for the wall street journal on the three facts of the resurrection the first fact he says is that jesus is lord means he is god this title lord appears several times in saint paul's epistles because he wanted to underscore that jesus is the lord and not the roman emperors you know roman emperors were considered as lords and gods so he wanted to say the roman emperors are not gods jesus is the lord and he is god the second fact is that jesus confirmed all his claims about his identity that he is divine and the son of god jesus said destroy this temple and in 3 days i will raise it up and he said i am the lord of the sabbath he also said before abraham i am all this says that he is divine he is the son of god and the third fact is that god's love is more valuable than everything else we reflected on his love on uh, monday thursday holy thursday where he washed the feet of his disciples and on good friday where he gave his life a sacrifice saint catherine of siena says nails did not hold him there but love did nails did not hold him there but love did yeah it is because of love he gave his life you know not the nails so on the cross brothers and sisters jesus took all the sins of humanity the violence the injustice and the hatred he responded to these dysfunctions with forgiveness father forgive them for they know not what they do when he appeared to his disciples jesus did two things he showed them his wounds and he said peace be with you we also have the empty tomb the shroud of turin many of you might have heard the burial cloths that we heard in the gospel and the moment that the church started as, as the proof of his resurrection nt right the anglican theologian he said you know the moment that jesus started would have been dead if he is not divine if he is not god even after 2000 years the church is going strong so finally brothers and sisters easter is the greatest and the most important feast in the church for four reasons the resurrection of christ is the basis of our christian faith secondly easter is the guarantee of our resurrection those who believe in jesus will also rise again thirdly easter is a feast that gives us hope and encouragement 
in this world of pain, sorrow and tears. It reminds us that life is worth living. It also strengthens us in fighting temptations and frees us from unnecessary worries and fears. Fourthly, Easter gives meaning to our prayers. It supports our belief in the real presence of Jesus in and around us, like I said in the Easter candle. In his church, we see we all worship together, we pray for each other, we support uh, each other. He is in the Blessed Sacrament and we are going to receive him in the Eucharist. And he is in heaven hearing our prayers and so gives meaning to our prayers. So my brothers and sisters, what does this mean to all of us now? What does this mean to all of us now? It means we need to live the lives of resurrected people. No more disappointments, no more frustrations, no more fear of challenges and trials because Jesus is victorious. He won the victory of all the disappointments and frustrations. Look at Mary Magdalene, went to the tomb. She ran and told the disciples. They ran to the tomb. And then Peter, he ran and proclaimed the good news that Jesus rose from the dead. So may God bless you. May the good news of the resurrection of Jesus fill each of us and the whole world with the hope and love. God bless you all. Amen. And so my sisters and brothers, as Father Michael said last night at the Holy Vigil, Father Gary blessed the Easter fire. He blessed the holy water that we are now going to use to renew our own baptismal promises, and we will sprinkle you with this new Easter water to remind you of your baptism. So I invite you at this time to turn back toward our baptismal font. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. So now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I invite you wholeheartedly to respond, I do. So do you re renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Therefore, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestow on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace, and Jesus Christ our Lord, for eternal life. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Loving and gracious God, we now ask that you listen to our prayers and our needs of this day. For the church, that we may radiate the light of Christ each day and confidently live as sons and daughters of God, we pray. Lord, that the light of Christ will strengthen and direct all leaders to transform our wounded world, we pray. For all who have completed their sacraments of, of initiation, that they will persevere faithfully in all that God asks them to do, we pray. For those who suffer, that they will know the sure hope of the victory of Christ's empty tomb, we pray. For healing of hearts and relationships, that the risen Lord will open the path to reconciliation, we pray. For Noreen Beck, and for all who have died, and for those who grieve their loss, may they know mercy, peace, and the fullness of the risen Christ, we pray. For the members of St. Peter and St. Dennis, and for our personal intentions that we offer at this Mass. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. So, risen Lord, these are our prayers that we voice before you. We ask that you hear them and guide us always in your love and the new life of Easter. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. I invite you now to please be seated as the altar is being prepared for the Eucharist.
And let us pray. Exultant with pastoral gladness, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalt in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as together now we sing and we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, that we have brought to you for consecration, that they will become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
with St. Denis, St. Peter, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church honor with your servant Francis our Pope and Donald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In that spirit of our amen, at our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may we always be freed from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with all of you. Let's take time to share that peace and love with one another. Michael, peace be with you. God bless. Thanks. <laughs>
And behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Lord Christ, keep us safe for eternal life.
I'll see your scars, your open arms, the beauty of your face. And through tears of joy, I'll lift my voice in everlasting praise. And let us pray.
Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Before we leave today, I'd just like to, the words of gratitude for so many people that have been working at St. Peter's and St. Dennis, those in the environment, those who have been working on liturgy, the music ministry, uh, your fearless leader, Father Gary, who just appeared a little bit ago. He had masses over at St. Peter's, and Father Michael as your uh, second in command as well. And they call me retired. I just say I'm tired, not retired. <laughs> and especially to the music ministry today. Uh, they did an awesome job, so God bless. So from our home to yours, as you gather with family and friends, or if you're gathering alone, may you always be open to that love and that spirit of the new life of Easter. So the Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God come upon us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Eucharist, this Mass is ended. Go now and live the gospel. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us go forth today in song, singing Glorious Day.